Julian Langdon, together with Roman Chister, who is considered MP for Gillingham and Raynham. Good morning to both of you. Morning. Julia, you're going to start us with the big speech of the week. Well, there were several speeches, but this is the one you're focusing on, beginning with the Mail and Simon Heffer. Well, I think the main political debate at the moment is about the nature of our capitalism. Um, I think this is a brilliant headline, Fred should be in jail sewing mailbags, but there's nothing immoral about capitalism. It sort of sums up that Heffer and the Daily Mail. Um, what he's arguing here, though, is um, Heffer is not an enthusiast for David Cameron, but um, there's a lot of discussion about popular moral capitalism because of Cameron's speech this week. Um, and then in The Guardian, we've also got a piece about socialism and what the capitalism is the alternative to from Tristram Hunt, the, the uh, Labour MP. And the point we should make here is that it was Ed Miliband who talked first about bad capitalism and good capitalism. Well, of course, most capitalists don't accept that, but mm. that, that is the story that will run, I think, in politics for the next few weeks. There's so many times of capitalism around right now, crony capitalism, popular capitalism, Hyper, what was turbo capitalism? That was this week. <laughs> but I think one thing we have to look at, I think, is what the Prime Minister said in 2006. And he touched on this when he talked about corporate capitalism and dealing with that, you know, into corporate responsibility. You know, I think this goes back to it. You know, what we had before, it's, uh, if it's free markets and it's fair markets, you know, where people get rewarded for hard work and it's regulated absolutely right and proper, where you get, re you know, rewarded for failure, which is what we've seen over the years, completely unacceptable. Well, you were talking about moral capitalism, wasn't it? Sure. I thought that was quite interesting when you said that markets ultimately can be very moral when yeah. they link reward to risk and effort. Absolutely, but they yeah. Do that. yeah, yeah. But they're uh, also competitive, aren't they? Um, and paying each other too much. And, and we don't let's forget, I mean, don't let's let Fred off the hook. There's been a big debate this no, week agree. also agree. about yeah, yeah. his knighthood, you know? I mean, yeah. Yeah, really? well, it, it sort of suits the Tories, doesn't it, to pin it on the previous government? No, not at all. I think, I think we've got to do what's morally right. And I think, you know, all the parties are coming together to say what happened before, absolutely unacceptable. We've got to work together to get it right. Look out, Sir Fred, you're going to be sewing mailbags before the year's out, I think. Uh, talking of uh, corporate uh, uh, stories, the FT uh, does a lot of that, but today your focus, Ramal, is on uh, Syria. It is indeed, actually, because tomorrow is a significant day. We've got the Arab League uh, coming together, the ministers. I think we'll look at the, the report which uh, the observers went into Syria. And, uh, and I think, you know, the key thing from this is I think Assad has played this very cleverly. Cleverly in the sense where he's delaying, delaying, delaying. And the significant point on delay is in March, Qatar gives up the presidency of the Arab League and it goes to Iraq. And we know with Iraq, the, the links with Iraq and the government in Iraq with uh, Mr Maliki being linked to Iran. So therefore I think, you know, what he's done firstly is brought him the, the observers to 150. 150 cannot cover the whole uh, country. So the report tomorrow is going to be pretty vague and say, let's uh, delay it a bit more. Then March comes in with Iraq and they'll say, you know, let's not get internationalised this issue. And, and I think that's why the Prime Minister was right to focus on a visit to Saudi Arabia to look at our strategic partners with the Saudis in that region. Because otherwise, I think what Assad will do, he'll play the Arab League. The Lebanese uh, are, are, you know, are with, you know, do not want intervention, nor do the, um, uh, the Algerians and all to the Iraqis, so who play their divisions and drag this out longer, which is sad for the people of, um, of, um, of, uh, of Syria. Well, the ones who are getting assassinated, yeah. yes, by, yeah. by government troops. Uh, delay sometimes can be the same thing as victory in diplomacy, can't it, we find. Uh, Julia, elocution. Um, well, um, there's a piece, there's, there's quite a lot about elocution around as, as well at the moment. Jo Joan Bakewell um, uh, said in, a, in a, 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 a speech to an audience, I think, in a the theatre, that that these days she was too posh for the BBC. I don't know about Sky, um, but um, <laughs> she, made the, the, she was making the point that she's actually, um, she had an accent and she had elocution. Well, I don't think she had elocution lessons, but she went to Cambridge and she learned to talk like all, the, yes, like all the nicely, nicely bred girls she met at Cambridge. She learned yeah. to talk like, as they did. Um, but tell me, I went to a high school in Gillingham, you know, which was a failing high school, and uh, from then on to be a, be a barrister. And I think, you know, even with an allocution lesson, you know, I think sometimes in the environment you work, you know, and I picked up my accent from being a barrister for many years, mm. um, but beforehand, you know, it's, you know, I didn't have any allocution lessons. Can we, let, can, mm -hmm. Eve Pollard, who you were on the panel with two weeks ago, you and I talking about Margaret Thatcher, she, after the riots, was with me and she was listening to a gang member and she got to the end of the interview and said to me, could he ever work in a call centre? Could he ever work at pret a manger making sandwiches? Yeah. Of course not. No. And there is that side of this debate is about social mobility and elocution. Well, in, well, there is indeed, and and there was a time when you did need to have elocution lessons. I, I wrote an obituary of a Labour MP called Charles Morris um, for the Guardian this week, 
and he had had elocution lessons apparently. He came from an incredibly poor family in, in Manchester. Um, <clears throat> and the former chief whip of the uh, Labour Party said that when he listened to Charles Morris, it was like turning on the BBC Home Service. You, you know, the thing is, we'll get emails about this, but it's important to make a distinction between accents and diction. Yes. You know, uh, but we haven't got time. I'd love to go on yes, at it's length about this story. We haven't got time. I really want to do the Daily Mirror story. I know that means we're skipping Roman, your story about Alicia uh, Dixon. I think we'll be beginning for that. I hope we'll be beginning for that. But let's talk about the Mirror. Uh, this Now that's tragic, let's show the front page if we can. Uh, don't giggle, well, not a lot. Um, is this front page offensive, Julia? Yes, yes, it is. It's very offensive. Um, uh, Paul Daniels has had a tragic accident with a circular saw and cut off two of his fingers. You probably, well, you can see the blue bit in that photograph is his bandaged arm, and he's maybe not going to be able to do the tricks he used to do. But it is a story that will interest people, but I do think that that is really bad taste. Yeah. So, McCare, I mean, in a sense, you know, it happened, it's true. Uh, it may tell us something about health and safety, Ruman. I mean, you know, newspapers have got a, a duty to report this kind of thing. This is questions of tone. I, 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 think, I think a lot of time it is about tone, actually. I think in terms of reporting it, absolutely in terms of what Paul Dennis did before, but in terms of how you report it, I think it's getting the balance right. I think Julie's got a very good point, actually. Well, I was, on, I was political editor of the Daily Mirror. I, I, I mean, if I had been there... Would you put that? I, no, I, it's Stop. the headline. I mean, right. they could have led on. Okay. Sorry, it was the headline. I'm sorry, we're going to have to cut it short this, uh, this morning, but really appreciate your picks this morning. Ramal, Julia, thanks both very much. Pleasure. This is Sky News.